Drew York Show, live from the Birth, Death, and the Inevitable Loss of Youth exhibit by Jordan Souk uh, inside the Toronto Media Arts Centre. Um, my special guest today is a fantastic rapper, um, all the way from Vancouver, um, and he's just finished up uh, opening on the Night Lavelle, Good Night Lavelle tour. Um, Ili Miniachi, come join me, man. <laughs> Thank you for doing this, man. Sick. What's up, what's up? How was last night? Man, last night was crazy, bro. Like, That's probably a good place to start. The last show of the tour. It's been like a month now. We've been on road and shit. It's, it's been a really good experience, bro. And that was your first time performing in Toronto, right? Yeah, that was my first show in Toronto. My club, I would say, it went pretty well, you know? I mean, yeah, from my perspective, like it was, <laughs> in, like the crowd was like showing so much love and like that when you were like in the mosh pit, like, yeah, like yeah. I think people were like loving that. Yeah, they loved it, man. And the thing that blows me away is like, you know, they don't know my music or... They don't you know. They don't know yeah. who I am, and I just came there, and like they still received it in a very good way, and like everybody seemed like they're having a good time. Got lots of good feedback and shit, so I'm proud of proud of that, and I'm very thankful to these guys as well for giving me the opportunity. You know? Yeah. Um, this is our first time like ever like having like, a conversation like this. I think we should start um, maybe like how music became a part of your life, like even as early as you can remember, like what it was that when you knew like you really cared about music, you know? Right, like to be honest, I always enjoyed listening to music as a kid, you know? Like I was infatuated with music. I wondered how like people would make it, you know? Like I wondered like how did they create this, you know, that kind of shit. Like, and that was just something that was always in the back of my mind, just like from early ages, like maybe like 10 years old even. Like I was taking like piano lessons and shit like that when I was even younger than that, like eight and oh, wow. shit, yeah. So I've always been around music, you know? But it wasn't until, I turned 18 in, I think, 2015. That's when I decided, like, yeah, I'm going a, I'm to a go hard with this shit, you know? That was your first project, right? It was 2015. Yeah, 2015 when I dropped my first project. It was, it's a bunch of question marks, right? Yeah, three question marks. <laughs> that's, that's the what name did you call that? That was the name of it, three, three question, question marks. Three question marks, yeah. 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 That's funny. I was because looking on the internet like the other day when I was looking at that, I'm like, I wonder what you would call that, like, to market that project. <laughs> that's know? what it was called, three question marks. <laughs> that's yeah. funny. Um... I got put onto your music through, I'm sure of like how a lot of people get put on your music is through Johnny. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Johnny. Shout out to Johnny, he's back here. Um, yeah. That's my manager. I think something we could talk about for a minute is definitely the importance of finding the right team or the right manager in this case, like uh, as um, an independent musician. Definitely. Like the way that, that he rides for you is like insane, you know, that, that he's like, that's like, but, know, like but at the end of the day, it was, it's all organic, you know, like I knew Johnny, the way I met Johnny was he was actually shooting a video from my first ever music video I ever shot. Like he was the one with a camera, you know. Oh, really? That's how I met him, you know, like he <laughs> wasn't, hilarious. he was like, you know, we weren't even thinking about any of this shit like back then. Like I was, that was just after I dropped my first mixtape or whatever. And I was just like, just trying to see where shit would take me. And I ended up meeting him and I realized like this guy is way too smart to be fucking just doing the shit, you know what I'm saying? Just shooting videos and shit like that. But so we became friends and shit, and like, I started linking him more, and the relationship just grew from there naturally. And he was already fucking with my music be beforehand, so it was all just like, you know, it was it wasn't forced or anything like that. Like, you know, I was, was talking to uh, uh, Brody Harvey. Yeah, Brody. Shout out to Brody That's Harvey. Yeah. Um, Shout out Brody. Telling him I was gonna do this, and he was saying that this is like a unique interview because you and Johnny have like really been part of like the new Vancouver like rap scene like from the beginning like you Definitely. guys have been like part of that like I feel like we're we're the we're two of the people who like really changed the the dynamic of Vancouver and like just the way people view it and shit like that you know yeah in terms of music and him like through his business and festivals and all that shit like we've definitely made our imprint in that city you know well even just like i mean like the recent project of like something like um like breakout festival yeah like i know like because i'm from ottawa so like night lavelle for like us from ottawa like when people see night lavelle perform in ottawa yeah all those kids that are artists are sitting there like oh fuck like now i realize that that could be me yeah because it's possible, all these other yeah. artists come from out Definitely. outside of the city you're like oh but they're yeah, already, you know, they're already big yeah exactly you, you know, start this guy that came from ottawa so like you know there's no like excuses you, know? you, put, yeah. you put those artists like vancouver artists on a bill other Vancouver artists can be like, shit, that could be me. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, Breakout really it started as like a showcase for new talent in Vancouver. That's what 
the idea was initially, you know? And the first few events Breakout had was literally in, in a room not bigger than this, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was just a tiny, tiny little event that me and this guy, we organized and shit. And, you know, it just grew from there into what it is now, big ass festival with close to 10,000 people showing up, you know? And it's crazy. It seems that even like the Vancouver scene has like really, like in the last couple of years, there's a lot of strength growing. Like a lot of people are like getting, not even just more artists, and there's more people making music and more people doing stuff, but like yeah. the efforts are like stronger. Yeah, more people are just, they're gaining confidence, right? Like they're seeing that like, okay, this shit is really possible, you know? Like, and there's more outlets for new artists to, to be discovered, right? So it's just more push for everyone to just go harder, I think. Um, how has it been for you as like an independent artist trying to like, just even like financially trying to like, you know, like I can I can imagine there's only like so many studios out in Vancouver. And there's yeah. only like I know there's like a SoCan office, but it's like a really small SoCan yeah, office. Yeah. And like, how is it like? Is there anything you could maybe like, maybe like advice for you know, some other Vancouver artists that are maybe a little bit younger? Is like some keys to like how you can sort of like. Yeah, man, learn the shit. moving. <laughs> learn the shit yourself. That's it, bro. To be honest, like that's what I started doing over the past like year. I just started learning to record and engineer myself, and now I'm. I'm at a good point where I don't need any any engineer. I don't. All I need is really the beat and a computer and a setup and shit, and I can I can make my music exactly how I want it to sound and everything, you know. And I feel like that's probably like the strongest key advice I would give to any new up and coming artist is to just learn how to record yourself. Because once you're capable of that, nobody can hold you back. Like there's no, you know, you don't gotta wait for some guy who's telling you, you know, his mom is doing this and so he can't come to the studio or shit like that, you know. So. <laughs> That's basically how I look at it, you know? Just once you learn to do it yourself, there's no limits that after that. Yeah, it's like that balance of like figuring out what roles that you have to take on and then what roles that you can't, so you have to like find somebody else for. Exactly. Yeah. Um, how has the tour been? The tour has been crazy, man. It's been a crazy experience with, uh, with all these guys in Night Lavelle's camp, um, Lil Dark Lord, one of, my, one of my close friends too, man. I fuck with that guy heavy. He's from out here, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, it, it must be sick to, especially because Night Lavelle is an independent artist as well, to like see like, just even the possibility of like what, what can be built. Yeah, what can be done, you know? This guy is really working too. A lot of people get it twisted, they think it's all like fun and games, but it's really not like, this shit is a job, you know? And someone like Night Lavelle, he's like a perfect example of that. This guy's all over the place, man. He's here, he's going to America, he's in Europe, like. He's just working constantly, you know? Like the videos of, like, those festivals in Russia yeah, where it's, man, like, 10,000 white kids, like, screaming. That shit is fuck crazy. <laughs> he was telling me he did seven shows in Russia, you know? Like, in different seven cities, you know? shows. Like, there's artists from Russia who can't even do that, you know? That's crazy. Oh, my God. That's nuts. That's so sick. Yeah. Um, how, what do you think has been your favorite show? Do you think last night, like, the Toronto show, do you think? Yeah, last night was definitely, like, definitely the most influential show. I enjoyed Edmonton a lot, to be honest. Edmonton was a crazy crowd as well. And Calgary, That's too. Calgary, Calgary went off. Vancouver breakout, that was crazy, too. But it wasn't technically part of the part of the tour, but he was there, too. And we were all there. So it felt like it was, you know? True. Yeah, it seems like those, some of those cities, like, um, yeah, like Calgary or, like, Edmonton, it's like they only get so much rap music. Yeah, so and when, so like when, when, when they, get, they it, get it, they're excited, they you know? They go for crazy for it. I remember... For it. Um, um, there's this kid new, he signed a 300. Yeah, he yeah. He opened for Fetty Wap across Canada, like all Canadian dates. Okay. And the, he said the best show was in Thunder Bay. Well, wow. Thunder Bay of all places. Right? Yeah, but he said like they he had no idea what to expect and he got there and there's like 7,000 people. That's and they're fucked. like scream, like they screamed his lyrics. That's Because fucked. it's like the only rap poster like on any street, any like, street, like street pole anywhere. So mm. if you see like a name on it, you're going to like go and Google it. Like, <laughs> you know, like there's no rap music. Right? Yeah, so, like, yeah. He's going to come, you're going to find out. You're going to want to be on top of that, you know? That's crazy. Um, is there anybody else um, from Vancouver that you think I should be listening to that I don't really know? The aliens I really listen to right now are like, um, like Ankle God a lot. And yeah, then, Ankle God, um, I fuck with Ankle God. Yerms my, my little bro still. Yerms, Yerms is sick too, man. All these guys are mad talented kids, you know? Like, they just need the right like direction and just keep going hard. And I feel like everything will, will, will happen for them, man. Yeah, but somebody I fuck with heavily... AC, that young nigga, I don't know if you you probably heard of him. Yeah, well, he's Johnny works him too. Yeah, right? exactly. He's he's also part of our our team here. And then um, one of my boys from Tashali, he's a singer from Vancouver. He's amazing. Like 
probably one of the best artists I've ever like heard, you know. But he's still he's still like developing a sound and getting everything ready before he presents it to the world. But I've been in the studio with him and like, you know, we're really good friends, so I take a lot of inspiration. He inspires me a lot, you know, like I'm not even gonna lie. He he's barely dropped any music, but his shit is crazy. I featured him on my last project as well, Ast uh, Astronomical. What track was that? Uh, track number four, Platinum. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was it was a more it. like R and B sounding song, like yeah. I think my I think when I really like when I really got like listening to your music was when you put that um, for the optics project. There. Yeah, for the or, uh, yeah optics the the yeah. EP yeah. yeah. For the optics is the single. Optics was the yeah, right. was the EP. Yeah, cause like the the first track, optics, and for the optics and vital. That's like my favorite. Yeah, vi song vital that goes hard too. Yeah, that was that project was crazy. It was like you know, I really made that shit in like the span of like a month. But it was just the, where I was mentally, you know, I was channeling everything that I'd been through like earlier in the year into just those five or six songs, and that's just what came out of it, you know. What do you think, I, I have this conversation with Johnny all the time about trying to bridge um, Toronto scene with um, the Vancouver scene. And I, like, I feel like it's, it's hard to do that because they're so far away distance. from each other, like, you know? Yeah, and I think that's like, it, it's, it's cheaper to like fly. To Europe, to like Europe you know, like, than it is to like go to Vancouver, Vancouver from here, like, you know? It makes no sense, but that's just how it is, you know? And I feel like that's also what's holding, holding people back from traveling there, you know? They see the price and they're like, what? Like, why would I pay that much money to go in Canada somewhere, you know, when I could go to Europe, you know, for the same amount of money, you know? It'd be sick to have Toronto artists working with Vancouver producers and then vice versa. And then yeah. having a Vancouver, and then Toronto, a Vancouver artists working with Toronto producers. To be honest, I just made a song yesterday with Bijan Amir. I don't know if you know of him. Bijan yeah, Amir is I was, sick. I was in the studio with him yesterday. We cooked up some shit. He sent me some beats as Dude, well. he's so. like an amazing producer. He's fantastic. Yeah, he's crazy. I love all the shit he's done with Sean Leon. With Sean Leon, yeah, huh? I fuck with Sean Leon too. He's an artist I was listening to a lot when I was like younger and shit. That's dope. Yeah, been working with Bijan, um, another cat from out here named Eli. Probably gonna work with him as Eli. well. Oh, I think someone sent me music that he produced this morning, actually. Yeah, <laughs> for real, he's, he's making a name for himself out here. Oh, I know what we should talk about is um, my fucking guys from Vancouver, um, so Loki. They told me to tell you, um, what did they tell me to say? Um, pop out. <laughs> that was oh, yeah, yeah, pop, pop out. out. <laughs> Bro, these guys love that song, man. Everyone in Vancouver <laughs> fucks with that song, pop out. Loki, I made that also with a, a Toronto producer, Eva Shaw. I don't know if you've heard of her. She's done some work with... Um, like show tech and shit, like EDM. Oh. It's like a almost, she's almost like an EDM kind of producer, but she told me she's trying to, she's trying to branch out and do some more hip hop stuff. So we linked up, she sent me some, or actually I sent her some reference tracks and then she, she actually, Pop Out was a song I'd made with, you know McAvoy? Have you ever heard of McAvoy? I've heard that name. Yeah, he's an artist from Vancouver. He's really talented. He's, Dude, he's just, he makes a different kind of music. Like, his own personal music is not hip-hop, but his beats, he can make, like, any kind of beats, you know? So he, we were, we were planning on working on um, a project together, and one of those songs that we recorded together was Pop Out. It was over his beat originally, but um, Eva Shaw connected with us, and, I don't know, Johnny sent her a bunch of songs, and she was messing with that one. And to be honest, we, weren't, we probably weren't even going to use it for that shit anyways, like, I, I didn't really know how I was feeling about the song and shit, but yeah, we sent it to her and she was fucking with it and she did her, took her own spin on it and turned it into pop out, you know, <laughs> basically, yeah. But it was a different song before that, you know? So when I heard it back, I was, I was kind of surprised, like, whoa, like, this is me, you know? But yeah, it was, it was sick. Um, what's, uh, what does the rest of 2019 look like for you? Now that this tour is over, because I mean that was like for the lot for the last little while, that's been the focus. Yeah, like, exactly, ready right. For this. But now I'm just gonna just keep working, man. More music, videos, all that shit. Like, probably try to do some more shows before the end of the year as well. Like, I definitely want to see more videos from you. That'd be yeah, sick. Trying to do some more music videos for sure. 
we've always got like crazy fits and you've always got like i don't know you're like your instagram is like fire so i yeah, feel like yeah, yeah. Your videos like your videos you always like look decent in the videos you know? yeah trust trust <laughs> we gotta we gotta because you know that's what i had a bunch of videos up before but i took them down just on some i want to make sure that my visuals are correct especially in line with my music and everything so that's really the next goal is just getting the visuals up to that same level as the music you know and then i feel like everything will just connect from there yeah, it's it's funny, man. Like that Vancouver shit is like, I find what's so interesting about Vancouver music is that it's because there are like there aren't like so many artists there. Like there isn't like like out here, there's a very like uh, a very like recognizable sound. Yeah. Amongst like some neighborhoods, like there's like a bunch of neighborhoods with a bunch of kids that are making music that's like really similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I find out in Vancouver, it's like you're so much more likely to be influenced by the internet. Yeah, exactly. So you got like kids like Ankle God, where there's like that's clearly not like Vancouver music, you know. Yeah, like, but at the like same time, like, internet. what is Vancouver music? There is no, there. It's not, you know, yeah. like it's there hasn't been anything that could say that this is Vancouver's sound, you know. And everyone there is really just doing something completely different. That's why, like, I appreciate it at the same time, you know, because it's like each artist has their own thing, you know. Like each artist is doing their own thing. They're not trying to like copy each other and shit like that like and i and i respect that too yeah it's sick that you have people like so loki and then like ankle god and then, yeah like, you know you, like, and then, like all these guys making different and, like, you know, like, different yeah, sounds right like, each other. but we all we all fuck with each other we mess with each other because we have to right like it's very like you said it's a very That's small key, I think. Yeah. it's a very small select number of us so and we recognize that and we know that there's more power together than there is individually so that's just part of the shit you know cool um Okay, when I go back out to Vancouver, what are the like two spots I gotta hit for food that I probably don't know about yet? Bruh, me, I'm not. I'm a very picky eater, bro. Like, <laughs> I don't even like. I don't like a lot of food, man. But Vancouver has really good food spots, you know. But I'm just mad picky. I don't know. Like, I'm gonna tell you some shit, and you'd be like, "Yeah, I've been there before," you know. So I'm, I'm just not gonna answer that question, man. Like, <laughs> I don't, I don't be eating at like some low key spots like that. Oh, like, you know? Brody took me to some fucking food truck. Oh, was it a burger one? No, it was a falafel one. Falafel. It was like pink and blue. Nah, never heard of that. So still. Fire. That's so funny. Yeah, they got a lot of good food there, though, like for sure. Okay, who else? Um, who, who would you like to see on my show? Who do you think I should be interviewing? If there's anybody that comes to mind, a little dark lord. Yeah, I want I want you to interview him. I would I would like to see. That'd that, be a sick know? interview. Yeah, he's got a lot to say. I'm he's sure. got he's got a lot to talk about. You know, he's a very interesting guy too. Like, so that would, that would definitely be someone I'd like to see okay. on here. Yeah, that would be sick. Okay, hopefully now it'll happen. Okay. Yeah, see definitely. You. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, no worries, man. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for watching the Drew York show. You already know. Uh, yeah, till next time. Illuminati, let's get it.